We're ready. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Pep Talks. As you may have noticed, right now, There's there is no, no Eddie Pepitone here today. There's no Pep. This you, is the first time. You've been had. And I'd like to welcome our guest who's going to help me get through an hour, the great Mark Brazil. Here he is, one of the, the finest comedy writers from Buffalo, New York, in the history of the United States of America. Mark, how are you today? I'm good. Steve asked many people to do this, and they all said no, and I'm proud to be here. I emailed people who I don't know. I just sent them <laughs> emails. I think it went to their spam. Uh, but Mark, he, I begged him. I begged him for a week. <laughs> and I, when, I told him, finally he said, if you stop texting me and calling me, I will agree to do your your podcast listen you can't tell if i've blocked you on your phone can you <laughs> i can oh i can tell oh oh yeah well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> boy i bet you're missing eddie right about now yeah sorry folks um, uh yeah it's uh we're trying to fill the bad. silence with sound for an hour in honor of eddie pepitone who's in kalamazoo michigan kansas which is um, what, right Mark? over the border yeah Mike warned us about the military industrial complex and we didn't listen. And that's exactly why we can't have nice things. Anyway, one of the major reasons, enjoy, definitely. Uh, hmm? one of the major reasons. Yes. The yeah. MIC is destroying America. Anyway, you know, if you're going to get hot dogs, splurge and get the boneless ones. They're so much easier to cook and eat. Boneless hot dogs. That's going to be one of our sponsors soon. Boneless hot dogs. That's good. Can you say Mark Oscar Brazil's. Meyer? Can I say Oscar Meyer? You or? can. You okay. can say that, yeah. If I say Oscar. something five or ten times, like Marlboro, will they give me, like, free products? or? No, um, they'll no. take the free advertising. Oh, okay. Marlboro. Marlboro. It is, it is redneck poetry when you say Marlboro. It yeah. Is. Yeah. I have cowboy boots on. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, look, the wheels have come off already. I don't know. It's it's only like four or five minutes in. Steve. You're doing fine, dude. You're uh, fine. Relax. I miss Eddie. We I all really, miss Eddie. Uh, we all miss. Can Eddie. he call in? Is he, he so busy? He can't. Uh, we discussed that. He said it's a travel day. Today's a travel day. Oh, okay. so it's impossible for him. Plus, and he also gets time and a half on a travel day. So, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. That's the artist rules. Okay. Well, um, I just don't want to bother him on a travel day i texted him a few times about some other things i didn't hear back so i figure you know just let him be he's busy he's he needs rest you know what i mean he needs a certain amount of chill time here i'm going to read this for uh, this for Go emma ahead. Go actually ahead. don't listen emma uh millennials are already pretty mad about the environment so please don't mention all the sex gen x had just don't bring it up it's just gonna upset them. Shh. gen x don't didn't have it. what are you talking about it was Boomers your generation no, who had here. sex i'm a gen x or we never got laid as you are we were the AIDS what do you think generation. he's saying when he says we come were as the you are AIDS come as you i was the AIDS. 80s were the uh, no 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 hey. no you were before the 80s dude you're 70s adolescent i was a fucking teenager in the mid early 90s when girls knew they could die we knew we could die too in 85 not really. Oh, dude. Not like in 92. I actually had a friend who moved to New York in the early 80s, and he died of it before 84. So, But I think people were ignoring AIDS until Magic Johnson came out. Did you Magic know you Johnson... can't have sex with a sheep in Kentucky anymore? Because of Mitch McConnell? Probably. <laughs> well, that's sex with a turtle. Um, you know. Is that still legal in to, Kentucky? Apparently now, if you want to have sex with a sheep, you have to drive him uh, to Arkansas. So... It's just, it adds to the whole. I got a buddy who looks like Dilbert, and he grew up in the 70s. And he said, we knew every night if we went out, we would get laid. Every night yeah. we went out, we knew. You didn't even have to go out if you're from the South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it friends. Tell, tell us make what it was like in, in Buffalo. You don't care. <laughs> tell us what I it was, I was like in, in San Buffalo. Diego. I lived in the South. I lived in the South. By the I way, know, I, but Buffalo was it's um, Rick James is from there. It's sexy as hell. Did you know that I, I performed in Tonawanda mm. pre 9-11? They were really, was really want to hit hard on 9-11. <laughs> no, but the redneck white trash weren't quite as mobilized then. Oh, until true. pre post 9-11 is what I'm if saying. only we had a bigger military 
and defense budget to have stopped 9 /11. I know, but that's not if what's only draining our. Had read that's all not the what's reports that said it was coming. If that's only, not what's draining our economy, Mark, it's the health care and the and the entitlements to the poor and people who don't want to work. That's what's draining our economy, Mark. Don't give me this military. We need a strong military. Um, <laughs> no, you see, here's the thing: uh, Republicans need poor women to keep having unwanted children, so we have more fodder for the wars we fight. Anyway, enjoy your yogurt. See, I'm not as good as Eddie is at saying something. Dude, why are you horrific? Why do you keep ever well, doing? I'm in You're his doing... chair. No, no, I'm in his chair. You're in oh, my chair. Oh, I'm in your chair. Oh, yeah. then I don't. Have you to don't be have good to do at all. That's exactly <laughs> right. Here, another release. <laughs> be released. <laughs> be released from your burden. Are you? Do you feel better? I do. Oh, good. Um, did you know that Joe Biden offered to let a lot of the women he's, he's offended? Reading. I just want to tell you, folks, he's, he's gonna, reading off of his. No, I'm not. But by the way, this I'm is just what. Reminding myself, look, Joe Biden said for a lot of the women that he upset, if they'd like to come and sit on his lap and tell him about <laughs> it, he would like to start the healing. Start the healing, Joe. I don't hear Emma at all. Does she ever laugh or is. is oh, yeah, when she Eddie's has her, a, she laughs uproariously no, all the time. Oh. <laughs> You don't have to flirt with Emma. She's got a boyfriend. Dude, she's I'm she's the same age as my children. It doesn't You're stop the you when we're out in public. You know, idealists <laughs> are just cynics who haven't gotten kicked in the nuts enough. You heard me. Another Facebook Nobody, post. Nobody, none of these people get to read my Facebook. It's private. This is only Wait, for. I just want to. I just want to point out when we're out. This is this is a treat for you That's folks exactly because how. when we're out, he will do this in public what with like me, it? and and it's actually I find it amusing. I do find oh, it amusing. I find it entertaining. All right, here's what some I, of them, here's because some of them are God. bad. <laughs> Emma, I'm mad at God because, okay, this is not like top shelf, but kale should taste like pizza. What's the big deal? Why didn't he make? I think you should open with the weak, weak material and um, build up to the Biden. No, no, I like to do it the opposite. They gotta like me front, and then they'll forgive me for the shitty stuff in the middle. Um, oh, this is the middle. God, I hope so. What time is... Oh, my God. This is the beginning. This is awful. <laughs> By the way, why, does, why isn't it just one tooth? If we had just one... If the whole thing was just one tooth, you wouldn't have to floss. I know. Just, it's a design These are flaw. reasons you're upset with that. Go I'm on. Saying. What's another one? Oh. Is that it? Just two? No, I got another one. <laughs> why can't zits be on your ankle, not your face? Why you fuck face right on the tip of the nose? What's up with that? It's a you, design flaw. I'm just saying. You had a. I never had a pimple on the tip of my nose. Everyone's had a pimple on the tip of their nose. Not me. Emma. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's called the Rudolph. I like this, but this is a good tactic going to Emma. Emma, you're going to be part of this. We're going to. We're going to. In you're honor of be, Brody. You're going to be. In honor of Brody. Oh, I'm here. Also, I agree that kale should taste like pizza. There you go. I think most vegetables should taste like pizza. I know. Hey, uh, Emma, I dropped my mom off at the airport. Her flight's Wednesday. You get it? Cause T today is Wednesday. Oh, never mind. Mark, it's okay. It can only <laughs> it's get a better. Friday night joke. God damn it. You should work Shabbat into there somehow. <laughs> Shomer Shabbos. We had a great time bowling, by the way. I got we got to talk about that. So Mark and Eddie and I and a bunch of other Rick Overton and Troy Conrad and Trevor Kevalo and Liam. What's Liam's last name? McEnany. Leany McEnany. Lean Leany. Oh. Liam McEnany. And a bunch of other comedians all went bowling. And it was, a f by the way, I, I strongly encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever need to blow off stress, just grab a group of people and go bowling. It's that was really, fun. it was fun. Nobody went uh, over the line? Oh, we crossed the line many times when the things we were I mean, saying. On the lane. <laughs> Mark, in at the, the end of the first game, the, the other team, we were teams. We had two lanes, and the team to the right of us was competing with us. They were destroying us. It was like the Bad News Bears. Yeah, they had some ringers. They had ringers. Two you know? guys from Chicago. Two, right there. Yeah, I'm Forget from Chicago, it. but yeah, I wasn't like them. They played. Manly. They had a junior league bowling. My my schools never had a bowling team. We didn't. We didn't afford bowling teams and shit. Did you have band? Yeah, band we had camp? band. Band. Okay. We and we didn't have band camp. Right. Not yet. You didn't do bad. I think you beat me the last uh, game. Yeah, you were tired. I was tired you after tired. throwing so many strikes. <laughs> 17 strikes. Oh so, Mark, on the final Ugh. frame of the final game, now if you throw a strike or a spare, you get to, on the final frame, you get to keep throwing. Mark threw three fucking strikes in a row on the final lane of the first game. 
Yeah. And our team won because of that. That was pretty epic. I yeah. don't think that'll ever happen again. There were six strikes in that game, though. I had three, and then I had three. One, two, three. Especially Very considering exciting. how Mark throws the ball I don't down throw the as lane. Much as Mark heave. heaves the fucking ball in the air. A bowling ball. You watch these bowlers. They roll the ball to the pins. Mark just throws the fucking ball, and somehow it goes right straight it's down. It's sheer force. It's incredible. It goes about halfway down the lane before it actually touches the wood. How tall are you? 6'2". Six 6'2". Two. Six two. So imagine this guy, 6'2", heaving a bowling ball in the air. I mean, it's like a, it's like a carnival draft doing a carnival trick. 6'2", 200 pounds. Here's the thing about fat cops. Don't run from them because they don't want to chase you, and they will shoot you. That's why the fatter cops. That's a great, go, okay, you know what? Don't I say you can't come on this podcast and, and get learn. real world advice, yeah. people. Do you see that? We bring real motherfuckers in. We don't have trust fund yuppies in here. We get real world people like Mark Brazil who have experience running from cops. And dog food factory worker. Yeah. I was a dishwasher, phone sales in a boiler Wait, room. Wait, you sold cars, didn't you? I sold cars. I was a, um, I was a rodeo clown. Hey, hey, here's what's funny is my brother, who's from, uh, well, let's not go into it, but he used to live in Kansas, and he would come out here to L.A., and uh, I've lived here for a very long time. And we'd go into restaurants, or uh, Porto's, if you will, or Pantera or Panera, depending, the heavy metal band or the restaurant place, and the guy at the counter would go, hi, uh, two? And my brother would go, yeah, there's two of us, but he was so afraid that we, he, the, the guy would think we're a gay couple, he would go, there's two of us, we're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Always, every time, we're brothers. And I, and I finally went, yes we are, we're gay brothers. <laughs> so he stopped saying it. He finally just said, what did he, he didn't have, he didn't get another one to go to? He didn't have another. He didn't have anything. We're when not I together, said, he didn't say, he could have just said we're not together. We're from Utah, <laughs> we're gay brothers. He finally just, okay, just two. See, that shit is so great because that's what we grew up around. Like me oh, with I my know. dad. With my dad, I told oh, you. right. You would hold when his hand. I will hold his hand in public. He'll and at first, you. he'll laugh. No, no. Yeah, if it gets really out of hand, he'll, he'll punch yeah, me. If you just <laughs> insist on it, you throw yourself no, at his hand. Starts. You use both hands to hang on to his hand. And he has to drag you. <laughs> and then you start whining and screaming. The Love me, Dad. <laughs> the fucked up thing is I'll take his arm. I'll take his arm and I'll, I'll hold his when arm. When there's still some lead in the pencil, they hate that. Get the why I. Well, he's 75 and he still hates it. No, first he'll no. laugh. First he'll laugh. It was not a laugh of humor. It's a laugh of I'm going to I'm murder you soon. Your ass. I'm going to kill you soon. <laughs> and then he starts to turn beet red, and then he'll take my hand and he'll squeeze it really <laughs> hard. <laughs> and then if I don't let go, he'll swing at me. Then he'll start swinging at me. But uh, but that's but isn't it fun to be among people like that? Because it's so easy to upset them. You know, that's one of the thing about one of the things about living among homophobic middle America, which I now living in the boutique area of Hollywood where the men are all just, uh, uh, they make me feel like Marlon Brando. Well, hmm. you know, well, which is kind of, which is kind of cool with, with prior. prior. Absolutely. Okay. With prior, <laughs> which is more manlier than even then. I want you to read this and I, and it makes no sense at all. Okay. So you won't read our ad, but you want me to read your tweet. All right. I'll read. It's not a tweet. It's all like right. a thing. That all right. I, I'll read it. It's, it doesn't I'm make just pointing sense, out. You but, won't read an ad. But I want you to read it. Will you read it with gusto? It, will you read, read it? Read it as though you were John Cleese without the accent. Will you read, an, read an, ad? an ad? Okay. Sure. Well, that's a good, good trade off. Yeah, okay. Gonna... Michael Jackson. Turns out it was just a massive amount of smoke, but no fire. Just smoke. The most ever in the history of the world. Hot. Choking enormous gusts of smoke, yet zero fire. Tons of smoke! Don't get me wrong. There was, however, no fire. Normally, where there is smoke, you will find a fire. But in this case, all that smoke indicated no fire. Michael Jackson's innocent. That's all I'm saying. Written by Mark Brazil. Yeah, that was terrible. That, that was, I read now, that? that was Mark Brazil. No, but oh, wait, it's wait, absurd. Wait, that was Mark Brazil as a defense attorney. In his version of Michael Jackson's The Verdict. That was the closing statement. Hey, you know who wrote that? <laughs> My friend. Your friend. That's right. You, 
He, okay. He yeah. has sympathy. He's for, good. He's a good writer. He's a pretty good writer. You could have had him on the show today. <laughs> I don't think he comes east of the 405. I walked in on my parents having sex, and they completely freaked out. Really? Did this yeah. really yeah, happen? Yeah, it really happened. They freaked out. What? Get out of here. What are you doing? Is that a camera? It was so... Did they have cameras back in the no, 60s? No, I had the camera. I was filming them. Um, Did they have those video cameras back then? In you know what? That was the 70s. Dude, you're telling jokes for, that uh, um, yeah, thir someone 30 not. years younger should be telling. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to critique all these no, if I'm they're not. that bad. Look, you know. The Michael Jackson one was all right. Have you met Dead Air? Um, listen. Uh, what? Mm, we we almost just thing. had Dead Air. You just, you just I, blew well, it. I was going to. You know. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to do it. See, now he's self-conscious. That's what happened. Is I, I, I ribbed I have, him a little bit. I have a two-page uh, thing about the patriarchy, if you'd like to hear it, but there isn't a single joke in it. I think it's too long, two pages. <sighs> Speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, we have incredible sponsors from our show. Real ads written by our producer, Rat, Matt Rat. I just wow. called him Rat. Wow. I need caffeine. I feel really bad for Eddie that his Matt, name's on this. Matt Rosimoto our producer has written some incredible ads and some of these are actually new sponsors we've never had before most of america has forgotten about the deserted wasteland of entertainment where there are no rules and static is king static speaking of dead air unless you're a grandparent or a truck driver you may have forgotten about am radio mark do you remember am radio uh yeah there was a guy who would say that's the rest of the story. Who was he? Paul Harvey. Harvey. Good day. So you may have forgotten about AM radio or just brushed it off as an endless parade of conservative talk radio and mariachi music. Dennis, well, Dennis Miller's oh, on AM radio. <laughs> that, that's all I need to know. Well, today's modern AM radio has devolved into so much more than that. Where else can you hear? Go to hear multiple Rush Limbaugh complete for the same. What? what? Let me read that again. Where else can you go to hear multiple Rush Limbaugh's compete for the same ad time or a Catholic call-in show that rates its listeners based on the amount of money donated while demonizing Lutherans as the liberal elite? And if you can't reach a full erection without the monotone droning of an elderly Chinese woman reading from the Chairman Mao's Little Red Book, we got that shit locked down 24-7, bitches. That little creaky voice is going to help you paint the walls in your salty baby spray. Did I sexualize an old woman reading the Communist Manifesto? Hell yes, I did. Because on AM radio, there are no rules. So bend your ears where the FCC is afraid to tread. AM radio. It's a bizarro world version of the worst parts of the internet being yelled at you over static all day every day thank you am radio i don't think they're afraid to tread i don't think they remember it exists god thank god for them what the, what you the fcc has yet to weigh in on netflix what's that about i don't know it's none of their business is it because it's technically i guess not. but they they weigh in on everything else well they're definitely we're, fucking up the internet access of them right so why way, not that should be the number one thing that would any, every, any politician their number one job should be to make internet access free and nationwide so even if you're in the middle of kalamazoo you could get free internet and eddie pepitone and eddie pepitone because it's more it's like am radio it's not a telephone right it's am radio so it should be a strong signal it should be strong if uh, then let but you know, that would not suggest, privatized that would suggest that anyone who runs things gives a shit about us having any well yes that's the that's a major there. Misumption. Misumption. Yeah. I call it a misumption. It's a misumption. Well, you're like Norm Crosby, aren't you? You're the object of my defecation. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you a little story, Steve. Please, You got Mark. time for one? By the way, the reason that this Mr. Brazil is here because of his great stories, I have some questions for him so he can tell us some of his amazing life stories. Yeah. We, we heard about the uh, dog food factory last yes, time. I know. This is uh, about my brother. Okay. Uh, who's passed away, uh, so we can talk about him. He was, he, he, he was a husky boy. He was a husky boy. Unlike which, you. By the way, no, I was very thin and uh, bastardy, and he was a husky boy. Um, and uh, okay. by the way, every time we went to the mall and we couldn't find pants for him, 
the salesman would go, hi, have you seen, uh, have you been in the Husky section? And I would <laughs> giggle and he would chase me under those <laughs> racks of, okay, would, wait, you know, how, what was the age difference and how many was like siblings were between you? There was four kids, right? I was the baby. Uh, I wasn't the youngest. I just cried and shit my pants all the time. Yeah, you that heard was, it. That was that's one of my jokes. That so my, joke. uh, I was the baby. There was, th there was like m me and my two brothers. There was about six or seven years between us at any given time. So we were Irish triplets, basically. So, uh, but he was much bigger than me uh, until I got into high school. Uh, he outweighed me twice as much, and uh, so I, I, I could only. You thank God uh, you could outrun mind. him. Thank God you could. I out could outrun him, but I could also use my words to, to really. I was. I had to be a vicious. You were a vicious little fuck. Yeah. No. So uh, anyway, my dad, we had a dog whose name was Diablo, uh, who really was, just took the, the it's devil. a German shepherd. It was the devil. It took the biggest shits you'd ever seen. And of course, it was my oldest brother's dog who, who wouldn't pick up a shit if his life depended on it. So my dad's like, Mark, get, go in the backyard, <laughs> get Diablo's shits, pick them up, pick up Diablo's shits, Mark. That's your special job This today. was the beginning of Mark's comedy yeah. training. So I'm out back, and I got a bag, and I'm, it's, uh, who wants to do this? No one. But I'm doing it, picking up Diablo's shits, and then my husky brother, Barry, comes up, starts making fun of me, ridiculing me for wanting a shit-free backyard that I was demanded my, my two war my father who fought in two wars demanded there not be dog shit in the backyard. Now it's gonna make it happen. So he starts making fun of me. And I said, I don't care. Dad's giving me 50 cents a turd. <laughs> <laughs> you just made that shit just up. Just made that shit up. Holy shit. He loved money. <laughs> he loved money. And he was husky. He would buy snacks and treats. And <laughs> Twinkies. So Twinkies, the soda, Got a bag, got a big, big ass garbage bag. He's running to cut me off to pick up shits. And I'm like, <laughs> no, stop. You're beating me so bad. <laughs> He's picking up shits from the neighbor's yard that aren't even Diablo shits. He's going crazy, outrunning me, which is rare because he was husky. But I'm like, you were letting I'm him phone. Yeah, of course, I'm phoning it in. Gosh, darn it. That shit should be worth a dollar. <laughs> so he gets he's uh, there's he's no got more a giant bag of shit. big bag of shit. No more turds left. By the way, my father was hysterical for as tough as he was. You had to be funny if you fought in two wars. He's always somewhere smoking a cigarette and drinking coffee. Now that the turds are gone, it's my big moment. <laughs> he runs. He's done. There's no turds left. I'm <laughs> trying not to die because I know what's coming. You're the Tom Sawyer of Buffalo. I'm the Tom Sawyer of dog shit. Totally. <laughs> so <laughs> he runs in and my father's in the kitchen. He's looking out the back window because he doesn't understand how in God's name this is happening. So I got and he goes, I'm done. I'm going to show dad. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad's in the kitchen and. He, and I run because I got to see this. It's going to be so good. <laughs> and I run in and my dad's like, my dad's smoking a cigarette, drinking some coffee. And uh, Barry runs and he goes, look, opens a big bag of shit. <laughs> He's like, there's like seventeen fifty eighteen dollars $18. And my dad goes, what? What are you talking about, Bear? Now I'm in the back door just biting my <laughs> blood spurting from my fist. I'm biting it so hard because I got him. To laugh. And my dad goes, oh, Mark said it's 50 cents a turd. And my dad went, oh, ho, 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 ho. oh shit. And then I had to run because he's going to whoop. If he can catch me and get me on the ground, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I'm dead. But he can't catch me. He can't. I run. Well, he's exhausted. No, he's, he's, been exa running yeah, he's been running around collecting already. shit. He's got a bag of shit. He's exhausted from his shit collection. He, oh my God. So my dad, if I could get my dad to laugh, that was the biggest oh. win. Because that was, and he pissed himself that I, and he was the youngest of four too. So I think he had an affinity for me fucking Did he putting give him together hug like and that. Just thank we you. never hugged. I hugged him on his dad's bed, but he was already dead. That was the only time he'd left me. No, my dad was, he was great. 
Um, but oh my God, that was like my brother. If I ever told you the stories of my brother, my brother was such a he just had the worst luck in the world. We used to jump off the cliffs at Lake Erie. So point, like a quarry, crashing. like a quarry, right? But it's three or four stories in the air, and you got to jump way out. You got to jump way out because it's only it goes it's not, from it's about shallow. a foot you deep could, to about you ten get, feet. You deep. could get paralyzed. Well, yeah, you could die. So you know we're all little street rats. You know we all weigh sixty pounds. We're running to the end, jumping off. Well, Dude, my brother, this doesn't sound husky, like it's going to end well. Buck twenty. Oh, he can't no. jump far. Well, my friend PJ, who is real short and funny. Jump, Barry. Barry's like, I'm not jumping. It's crazy. PJ needled him <laughs> all day until my brother starts crying because PJ needled him so bad. Everybody's jumping but you, Barry. My brother, Barry, finally decides to jump. You got to run hard, fast, all the way down to the end of the cliff and push yourself out over it. Oh, my God. Oh, God. He runs. He's running. But he just falls We're thinking, off. oh, he's going to make it. He's really going to do it. He's running, gets to the end of the cliff, changes his mind, and then jumps. Oh, shit. We heard the screams <laughs> way up, three stories up. We're like, all right, we all go running and jump down into to, the water. Because you think you're going to have to save yeah, his we, life. We, well, we, had to pull, we had to get him up the, that cliff. We had to get him up the side of the cliff. He broke his ankle. Um, Thank God that's all that No, happened. that's all that happened. This wouldn't be a funny story. No, he would, it, no, it could be a terrible story. So we'll get him, we get him. This is, by the way, this is a perfect example of the place I grew up and what New York and the people are like. We get him. The three of the Miller brothers and I get my brother, pulling him up the cliff, up the side of the cliff. PJ's at the top. Barry's fucking, hey! <laughs> His leg's fucked up. And uh, we get to the top, and PJ goes, man, I told you not to jump, Barry. I fucking kill you! <laughs> That's, and it's hysterical. It's hysterical. PJ told him a hundred times, you're a pussy, Barry. Why don't you jump? You fucking jump. You're a pussy. Yeah, we grew up in the same kind of place. Yeah, I mean, we were brutal to each other. Yeah. Just brutal. Um, but it made you who you are. Like, you got to yeah, appreciate I don't regret, it now. No, it's not hysterical. at all. We jumped trains. We used to jump trains, which is abs the thought of it is like, can you imagine? I'm sure kids do Wasn't it. Wasn't there a I train robbery? Where. Wasn't there like there the was last train, train robbery in your... Maybe the last train robbery ever. The train, because I thought this, and then I, I posted it uh, on Facebook, and somebody said, no, that's absolutely true. And they and Because, you know, sometimes you think, well, I smoked a lot of pot. There were a lot of stories. <laughs> maybe something happened. Maybe it didn't. That train, it broke down uh, on the trestle. Is it raining? Oh, you hear that? Do you hear it? I do. Okay. Yeah, there's a little, Emma, there's a little uh, foggy. It's ambiance, Emma. It's not bad. You know, we can talk through it. But So so the train broke down. And uh, it's gone. for whatever reason, the one car that they snapped the uh, lock off of is filled with beer. And that was it. We drove a uh, uh, The last train truck. robbery in America. I didn't do it. Other guys from this. Oh, there was a place uh, called I The Corner. It. Nobody's it's implicating you in anything. Limitations. Did you get some beer? No, I don't think I did. But I. But I, you knew the guys. Oh, yeah, we knew all the. Everybody knew everybody. Um, and I think the guy who did it, his dad turned him in because he, he, he tried to pull he, his car in the garage and it was filled with beer. God damn it, Maddie! <laughs> Not a drinker, his dad. <sighs> that was the one person in Buffalo who wasn't a drinker. I don't know. I, I think he was just pissed that he couldn't get his car inside. People used to be weird about it. People anal retentive about their yard and their car. Right. Well, that was the keeping up with the Joneses yes. at Eisenhower. That was horrible shit. Yeah. It was a different kind of horrible then. It was yeah. a different kind of. But it, and it seems, this is one thing I've been thinking about. It seems more manageable looking back on it. But I remember hating it. I remember hating the people who I grew up around and not hating. I mean, I had friends and stuff who I'm still close with and I look back on it fondly. But in the time when it was happening, and I know I'm a generation younger, but in the time when it was happening, I wanted to get the fuck out of there so bad. I mean, so bad, man. Uh, well, there had to be something better somewhere else, you know. Um, well, and you haven't poverty, hadn't experienced any. You and I, uh, we've talked about this a million times. It's not Republican or Democrat. It's, it's not gender. It's not color. It's not any of those things. It's uh, the 99% versus the one. Can't be divided along those lines. Poverty makes you hate where you grow up. Dude, we were if all you, the one. We you know, were all the ninety nine percent. Of course, there, yeah. there was no one percent. The people who were rich had BMWs and Mercedes. Out here, 
They're the Every, middle. They're, yeah. Everyone has a meat. So it's a different kind of, you know, you couldn't see the wealth that was being, you know what I'm saying? It yeah, wasn't you can, that. You can hide it here a little better in the sense that you can have a BMW and a rental and a whatever. And from the surface, you appear you look to like be you like you're making it, it right. you know, right. But ultimately, no, you know, and that's what this whole sort of a lot of this town is about. Used to be anyway. You know, well, how's it well my joke used to be about, uh, you know, guys say, oh, you got to have money and a beautiful car to get women. Manson's bus didn't have an engine. He had women willing to kill for him. I, so it's charisma. Right. Man. There's one more other thing I want to I want to make mention of this. Wealth isn't enough to just get women. You've got to it's got to be visible. So if you're you've got to have rich, like uh, the New England Patriots, <laughs> you've got to own them in order to get a crafty, a handy. Is it a crafty yeah. now? Had they changed the name of it from a handy to a crafty? Tell us how you feel about, about Big Rob, Big Bob Craft. Listen, Rob Gonkowski has retired from football so he can dedicate himself full time to his career of as an idiot. Being a moron. As a moron. One of the most beloved morons in America. Are you Did, kidding? I mean, Did you see his stand up? I can't even believe that's true. Is that really true? Of that course Gronkowski it's true. Did? So, Showtime so for special. those of you who don't. Oh, stop. He's like, hey, how about if I bang your wife? Stop. <laughs> that's stop. a joke. Please, he please, thinks that's a joke. Please. I'll bang your wife. I think Gronkowski and Charlie Sheen should go on the road together. How is Charlie? I don't know. Have him. you talked to him? I haven't or? talked to him. I don't. I think Emilio's doing better. I would imagine. But uh, I saw Denise at Musso and Frank's, but that was that's been over for a long time. That is. Did you talk to her? I did not. Do you know her? I don't know her. But I'll tell you what. Beautiful. Oh yeah! Well, thanks oh, for telling God. us all something we don't. No, know. No, Denise Mark. Richards. Thank listen, you, if you don't know, no, we do she's know. She's beautiful. We know. <laughs> hey, Mark, <laughs> will yeah. you share with us your story about Robert Altman on the Fox Party bus? Oh, please, because okay. that'll be well, illuminating a, to to sophisticated and to young Eddie writers. Pepitone, sophisticated audience who want to hear inside shit about show business. That'll just oh, and, and help young you writers. understand how fucking backward this business is. Maybe right. keep you out. Go ahead. So I think it's 1999. I'm going on the Fox Party bus. Because you got your show. Because I had a show sh called That 70 Show. Right. And so the Fox Party bus is taking some luminaries from the network. This was weird, too. <laughs> luminaries. <laughs> luminaries. <laughs> I'm not positive. You were a luminary. I was a luminary. I thought I was. I was, I was informed later I was not. And I realized later I was not. But I think James Wong was there. I think Vince Gilligan was there, who you were on the X-Files. Right. I think that Jillian Anderson, Jillian Anderson was there with her child. Scott Wolf was there from Party of Five, who I had made a, a terrible video game movie with years before, called Double Dragon in Cleveland. We set the river on fire. That's another story. So They didn't then, notice in Cleveland. It was oh, it actually <laughs> was on the front page. River catches fire again. They were proud Movie in Cleveland. Asked they to were go proud film in Buffalo. <laughs> so, uh, production company. So I, but I'm on the Fox party bus, and there's and Peter Roth is there because that's who was president of Fox at, at the moment. He had bought that '70s show, and I see Robert Altman and his wife, and I'm like, holy shit! So there's a booth in the back of the bus, which is where we were going to play poker for hours on the way there and hours on the way back to the World Series. Uh, Padres, Yankees, Yankees won. Uh, Mariano Rivera closed it down. It was the beginning of the Jeter, the, the Jeter good, era. Yeah. Where they won they several. Were, they were very good. So uh, I parked myself next to Robert Altman immediately because I'm like nobody's sitting by him and I was shocked. So I just... Uh, Is it possible they didn't know who Altman was? I, yeah, I think they didn't. So another I, illuminating. Yeah. So I I'm asking him about everything about Mash, about McCabe and Mrs. Miller, which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. movies. Warren of all time. Beatty, um, which would never get made today about a about, about a brothel proprietor in old San Francisco. But it was so great and grim. That it's was such a great grim movie. Julie Christie. I know. You know what? But that would She's be a sexist film today. Attractive. Let's point out that Julie Christie's very attractive. I I don't these are his opinions. So, um also the player also shortcuts. It's Robert Altman. So I sit there and I we play poker and it's fun. And he's uh, telling stories. And I finally can't take it any longer and I go, "Hey, uh, hey Robert Altman, why are you on the Fox Party bus?" <laughs> 
Because <laughs> why is he on the Fox Party right. bus? And he said, oh, I did a pilot. I did a pilot that uh, I directed it, and Gary Trudeau and I wrote it. It's a political pilot. And I'm like, oh, my God, when's it on the air? And he said, oh, they passed. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Right. That's when I realized, you ain't shit. Right. You got nothing. It doesn't matter what you do. So, so you said, this is the way Mark illustrated it, some executive got a boner and was able to fuck his wife better because he could go home and say, I turned down Robert Altman today. Right? I passed that how you... Robert Altman. Right. Well, I don't know why else, you know, come on. That does, even if it's, you know what, I'm sorry. There should be tenure. It didn't have anything to do with Murdoch and Fox and Altman no. being a lefty no. or anything like that? No, I don't think so. Not at all. Look at the Simpsons. I know. That's the most leftist. It's pretty, I know. You know, I I'm just saying, I'm just wondering. 1% Harvard. I know. <laughs> it is, I know. What would a poor person say? Counterculture of the <laughs> ruling class, right? But they what, gave you. In this instance, uh, get a writer's assistant. What would a poor person <laughs> say? <laughs> bring me some real hip hop, Drake. Drake, bring oh. me some uh, public enemy, Drake. I want to show Basil and. Listen, Cardi B <laughs> may have committed some crimes with men, but I cheated at poker with my brothers in the Gamma House. Oh! You're I don't know. just That's, naughty. I just, you know. It used to be. You don't come up. You go to Harvard. You're a doctor. You no, don't no, write that's, little skits. No, no, no. That's you don't write the skits. That's what your assumption was by the people yeah, thirty who years grew, ago. Right. I stopped learning. Stuff. We didn't have people like that around us. There. Ninety-seven. I just thought I'm. I don't want to know anything else. I didn't. I, I know enough. I didn't learn to despise people like that until I moved to here. You know, I think that the culture stopped in about two thousand. I think nine eleven stopped everything. That's why. They're just remaking the muscle cars. They're remaking everything cool, or they're just keeping everything cool. Led Zeppelin is still the number one band in the world. So what you're saying Plymouth is... Plymouth Challengers, it's still a Plymouth Challenger. The Ford Mustang, look, it's a GT, it's a Ford Mustang. It looks exactly like the cars with better suspension, Culturally clearly. Culturally arrested development. Yes. We stopped trying. Oh, we've done everything. Let's stop. We stopped changing, evolving. Yeah. Growing, right, right. I think we did. That's pretty profound, I man. Think I think you're more. onto something. I'm not kidding. And on that note, in the spirit of oh, Eddie Pepitone, no. I think it's time for another ad from one of our wonderful sponsors. And uh, I think I'm going to have uh, Mark read this one. Mark, what do you think? You think he can do it? I'm sure you saved me the best one. I have no idea because I haven't read these. Oh. I got them three minutes before we went on the air. The, do I start with the uh, the beautiful Jennifer Aniston is starring in this summer's most anxiously awaited Amazon Prime original story, Secret Shopper. Aniston plays Kendall McFitbit, <laughs> a lusty young online review editor for a famous shopping website who falls in love with Bluetooth Instapot, played by a Passable Colin Firth type. Flirtatious adventures begin when Instapot writes a five star review of McFitbit's five star <laughs> reviews. And 113 <laughs> minutes of screen time later, sex happens. It's the most romantic movie possible, according to Amazon's artificial intelligence after cross indexing website search results. Rotten Tomatoes calls Secret Shopper a tour de force. We know Fandango owns us, but we really want Amazon to buy us, so there is no way we will say bad things about this movie. Movie Phone had this to say. Hello, is someone trying to call Movie Phone? If you can hear my voice, please, for the love of God, send help. It's been so long since anyone thought of us. It's so dark here and we're so alone. We need John McCain to climb through the duct and... All right, I, lo I riffed that last part. Um, Alexa... Add Secret Shopper to my watch list. It's, oh, it's a, uh, oh. Jeff Goldblum. Oh, it's a real movie. I, uh, Jeff Goldblum plays Jennifer's father. 100% uh, not to our Mad Lib of search results starring Jennifer Aniston and Colin Firth type. Get Cozy Alexa has pre-ordered a bottle of $4.35 rosé. I would have said box. But hey, just in time for Secret Shopper because you will watch it. 
Thank you. That's pretty whatever damn the fuck funny. that was. That's and pretty by the damn way, good. give it up. I'm gonna read that too because I no, heard some things in that. Well, Eddie, Eddie does that to me. I the riffing. Was you're gonna great. do it. The All riffing right. was fine. I love the riffing, huh? but I didn't oh. actually take that in because oh. I was texting. Oh. Uh, so I want to huh? uh, McFitbit. That's damn funny. That is really funny. This is a funny one, Matt. Matt Rosimoto writes our ads, by the way, and Mark Brazil beautifully improvised and riffed on that. Uh, that was very well done, sir. Thank you. Man, the Tom Sawyer of dog shit. Don't forget <laughs> him. Don't forget him. The beautiful Jennifer Aniston starring in this summer's awaited secret she, shopper. It should be long awaited. Long awaited. You left the word See, out. the writer is editing your work, Matt. Okay. Aniston plays Kindle McFitbit and Firth type plays Bluetooth Instapot. That's what I wanted to read. I'm ready to start the podcast. Thank you, Secret Shopper. Thank you, Secret Shopper. We're really excited to be promoting movies nobody will watch and somehow people are getting paid for. So, Mark, uh, at this point... That in is the, true. How are they making money? We That's... How, I don't the, how does the chandelier shop in Beverly Hills stay open? Well, that's a Who Coke. the fuck is buying chandelier I've shop? I've heard. It's a Coke... Uh, they're just holding it up, the Coke brothers? No, they're selling Coke out the back oh, door. Oh, out the back door! Yeah. No, it's a front. It's a front. Okay. I like I buy, I buy that more than I I don't buy. understand why, when they say, death be not proud, dude's batting a thousand. I'd be thrilled with those kind of results. They're, Look, they're not all good, Steve. Get, give us some more. No. We got to fill an hour, I'll dude. talk about... Rich. Emma, how are, we, how, are we, uh, how are we doing? She was falling asleep back there, I think. We're at 42 minutes. Look at that, 42 minutes! I'm not sleeping. Wait a second, Thank uh, you, Emma. Emma. How are you uh, doing? What are you, going? What are you, yeah, how do you think we're doing? I think you guys are killing it. We got some good stories, good anecdotes. Okay. Having a good time. I have another terrible story about when I was uh, uh, actually uh, the worst... Anyways, I was a waiter at the Holiday Inn in upstate New York, right oh, off yeah. the 20. Um, Emma, this is so terrible. And I'm like 18 years old. And let's be honest, at 18, oh boy, I had just gobs of testosterone. and Like a permanent hard on. Yeah, absolutely. I had to wear one of those. Uh, did you have to call into work? Waiter to, things. Did you call into work to By say way, I can't this, come here's in? Here's the funny thing. The first time you learn how to masturbate, you might as well be Shazam or I Superman. I hope it was before 18. It was before 18. But I mean, it's really, honestly, it's the greatest moment of your life Shazam. up until that moment. Here, right. this is really fantastic. And the first time I learned how to do it, I'm like, holy cow, this is my thing. Just like Steve Martin, I found my thing in the jerk. And I'm leaning out of the shower going, oh my God, I remember there's Vaseline. And uh, I'm I'm reaching <laughs> you out of the shower for the cabinet. The open the cabinet. My mother walks in, and here's what she said: I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> she saw everything, and I'm like, oh my god, that's embarrassing. And I masturbated only like three or four more times. But then you masturbate at the point you hurt yourself, and then you're like, I hurt myself. I hurt. I'm hurt real yeah. bad. And you think, I got to go to the hospital. What hospital? And then you think nurses. You went to the hospital? One more time. Whoa, whoa, Just one more time. You went to the hospital? No, I didn't go to the hospital. When I thought of nurses, I did it again. And then I was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Men don't go to the hospital. No, we Steve. recover from. It'll bounce now, back. I, I will so say this. So I'm at the Holiday Inn. Listen, yeah, yeah. Wait, so wait, 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 very wait. horny. Before the Holiday Inn, I will say very this. Very horny. There was a period from between 15 and 23 where I would just call into work. So you could say I'm on masturbating? I couldn't. I'd be masturbating all day seven, eight times, and I, and I couldn't function. I might, like, mentally, I couldn't function after. You were all blocked up with that poison. No, I, I was <laughs> like a, I was like a heroin addict, sinking into a couch. It's good. Yeah, so go on sex with the holiday. Sex is good. We're going, it wasn't so sex. So I'm at a holiday inn. Well, it was sex, really. It's with, not, you, with just with you. With just you. Right. So I'm at the holiday inn, and there is just the, Emma, I'm, I'm gonna apologize up front for this story. There's the most beautiful woman Plus, I'm 18, she's probably 35, and her husband's probably 60, and he's a professor at the university. How do you know that? Visually, I assess the situation. You're an intuitive kid. She was a student, he married her. She's hitting on me relentlessly all through dinner. You were a pretty Ge kid. Oh my God. Yeah, you, I've seen the I pictures. I was beautiful. You looked if like anybody a... had a reason to masturbate, it was me. You looked like, he looked like Billy Zane in uh, Dead Calm. Yes, That's or Billy Worth in The Lost Boys. A Billy. A Billy. Anyways, 
Google Billy Worth, Emma. So when I was, uh, and I'm waiting on him, and the woman is really, and by the way, she's got red hair, red, red hair, and bright green eyes. She's very attractive. And her husband is, is uh, smugly laughing at all her jokes. And he had a pipe. He used to be able to smoke indoors when I was a child. And he finds her just a pip. So she's flirting and flirting and flirting. And I'm like, what's going on? They want to have a... It's so going to be a three-way, but just me with her because I don't want him to do anything with the pipe or <laughs> anything when I'm over there. I don't know what's happening, but I'm intrigued. And but she's yeah, giving me all these signals. Right. Like the third base coach. <laughs> Turn go and home. And go. Get it home. So they asked me to come have dinner at their house. Oh, I'm 18. What could that possibly mean except, you know, what else could it mean? I accept because, oh, my God, she was beautiful. Oh, boy. So I go to the house. It's a lovely dinner. Same thing. Flirting. Foot under the table. Really? Touching my hand. Really? Funny, funny. Flirty, flirty. And, and He's Rick, Rick amused. Overton, Rick Overton's over He's there. He's amused. Yeah. Uh, something, you know, big glasses, gray hair, pipe. He's amused. Sort of probably look like me now. So he, uh, he's going along with all this. And I'm like, this is, now it's weird. And then I'm thinking, holy shit, John Wayne Gacy, they might want to kill me. Who knows I'm even here. Oh, you had, you had adult, you had grown man doubts. I did have grown man doubts. And I thought, because you could take me out in a second if, if I'm preoccupied. <laughs> He could stab that me. That goes for any of us, ladies any and gentlemen. Us. You're in the middle any of that. Any man done. In a, <laughs> with the blood rushing in the wrong place. Go ahead. So she's, Carry on, she's gorgeous, and I'm like, it's, something's going to happen. Something's gonna, I don't know if anything's going to happen because I'm not going to let a lot of stuff happen. I would have let it happen. Anyway, so. Did the pipe go in your ass, Mark? Can we fast forward to the pipe? I fucking wish. I wish that pipe had gone oh, up my boy. ass instead of, instead of Amway brochures. Oh, you're fucking kidding. God damn Are it. Are you kidding? Please tell me you're God kidding. God damn I wish I was kidding. I still fantasize about that. The thing that never happened. Amway. They wanted me to fucking sell Amway for them because I was likable. Oh, my God. Talk about. That's the worst bait and switch I ever had. I, I, I don't it's even know. It's the I'm, worst I'm, bait I'm, and switch. I'm Emma. speechless. Did you, what do, you do you know what Amway is, that, is? By the way, do you people know what Amway is? It's a pyramid scheme. It's like scheme. Herbalife. It's a, right. Yeah, Mary it's Kay bullshit. was the original, right? But wasn't was that it? terrible? Yeah, that's pretty messed up. That was like that fish that has the worm on the head, but it's not a worm. It's just a thing that gets you so they can eat they you. It also could've... feels like a really inefficient way to get people into your pyramid scheme. I know. Right? Like but if, if she had if said, she had slept if with I you, sleep wait, with you, will you sell Amway? I would have said You would have yes. done it. I'd have I'd be an Amway. What if she to just slept day. with you and then brought out the Amway? I still would have done it. Right. I would have felt obligated. Right. I would have pulled the pipe out of my ass and sold some Amway. <laughs> <laughs> That's just this gives a new meaning to Pop. Thank you, sir. A new meaning to Pop. I have another <laughs> box of detergent and of a can of spinach. Oh my god! Wow. I'll never forget that man. She was so beautiful too. And Crazy she was just beautiful. she was playing footsies with you. Oh yeah, the whole thing. I had a woman. Now here's the terrible thought okay, that I because I've I've gone over it many times. Had I said <laughs> yes, still, yeah. What if then she had said, "Okay, now I can sleep with you," and he had said, "I'll film it." You know, I'll never again. Know. Nobody had cameras in the fifties, Mark. That would Everybody be a really bad had sales pitch. Like they don't they don't <laughs> offer the sex until after you've accepted. That's backwards. But it might be a right. Good, thank you. But I mean, it's it might a be a great model. comedy sketch. It's a terrible business model. Yeah. Sounds like a sketch on It's Always Sunny. I had a girl. I had a girl drive up from Miami, that I met at a job I had selling leather and jewelry. Don't ask. In Florida, did when you I, when I was in college. your own chaps? The girl came in. She was. You really, were a chap, but she drove up from Miami and she spent the weekend with me. And at the end, she tried to get me. She slept with me though. She slept with me uh, repeatedly, and at the end, she she asked me if I would sell her get involved in a pyramid scheme. I <laughs> laughed at her. That's, well, I, I, that's mean. I should have bought something. You should have bought something or said, yeah. No, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it, but I should have bought something. Yeah, you should. I could have bought a product or, you know, she drove up from Miami. You could have bought some. You're right. Uh, and you're making chaps. me feel now I feel bad. Could have bought a nice. Because you uh, got the ass end of that deal. Push up leather. Yeah, yeah. 
Can you, can you tell raw. us, because we're, we, last time you were here, last time Mark was here, I tried to get him to tell the story, but as Mark does, he went off on a tangent on another story altogether, which was good. I didn't want to. But he it. didn't tell us the story of Sam Kinison and him meeting. So I would really oh. like for Mark... I told if he, the story a lot. Yeah, but you didn't tell it last time I asked you to tell All right, it. I'll and tell you, you didn't... Okay. I, uh, Pregnant I, sister. I, I was a doorman at the comedy store, which, by the way, this it's one of the few jobs where you San can Diego joke comedy around store. with people in La Jolla. La Jolla. And I can remember, and by the way, this is inappropriate, but I'm going to tell the true story anyways. Man comes in. It's the first night I met him. He was he was an albino. He was a albino man in a wheelchair. He was an albino man in a wheelchair, and he was also... A little person he's an albino man in a wheelchair he had really big glasses and he, he was just little he was a little person he comes up to the door he says I've got three people joining me they're parking the car he said I would like to sit in the front row he gave me money he gave me, I think, twenty or forty dollars to sit in the front row, and I was like, absolutely. Which in nineteen eighty one. In nineteen eighty dollars, like, that's two that's million. That's like. <laughs> um, so I move him. I move a chair out, and I put him in the front row. He's a very nice man. Go back to the door. More people come in. Finally, a woman comes up. She goes, "Hi. We're joining somebody. Okay, and uh, he's in a wheelchair." I go, "Uh huh." She goes, "Yeah, he's a little person." I go, right? She goes, he's an albino. <laughs> I go, look, lady, I get a lot of people in here. Could you be more specific? <laughs> and she she looked at me for a second. And I said, I'm kidding. I know where he is. <laughs> Her she, reaction. She did not. You know, anyway. She didn't so find that amusing? She did later when she realized what I had done. Right. Like halfway down it, the aisle, in the moment she it started was. giggling <laughs> and then kind of whacked me. That's sort of me. a metaphor for your whole career, isn't it? Yes. That, that is a really Nobody gets a joke till it's much too late. Too so, bad. Uh, oh, God. I'm a doorman at the store. Wild Willie Parsons is the the biggest guy there. Is Eddie calling in? Oh. Eddie! Oh, no. We're going to get hey, yelled at. are you guys on the air? We are, Eddie. We miss you, man. Ah, uh, it's you and Mark? Yeah, Mark's telling a story about being the doorman at the comedy sure store in La Jolla in the early 80s. Thank you. He's captivating your audience. Ah, nice, nice. Well, I just wanted to... Oh, I'm hearing myself speak. Like, I talk, and then I hear my whole... Why is... Do you... Does anyone know why that is? No, but I <laughs> that happened to me when I was on the road and I called in, too. Same thing. Oh, okay. I thought it might be my medication. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Someone says something funny. I, you shut up. On this, this is the last oh. time I sit in for you, no, Molly. No, I, you know. <laughs> Eddie. You know, are you having to carry it? Eddie. Mark, are you having to carry it? <laughs> no, Steve, uh, he, he read some ads or something. I don't know. He's you know here. what? This is how you know Mark's serious. He, <laughs> he put on the headphones when you called. I can't Mark. hear him if not. Mark. The oh, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> you can hear it. Yeah. Oh, that's Much right. ado about <laughs> Eddie, nothing. What uh, Eddie, what Trevor Noah is to John you... Stewart, what 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 uh, Jay Leno was to Johnny Carson, I am to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I was checking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to make sure. Yeah, the you wheels know, came you, off. You remember what happened to Lou Gehrig, right? <laughs> like, oh, no, not Lou Gehrig. Wally Pip. Wally Pip. Lou Gehrig got cancer. He got a he, he You know what Lou Gehrig contracted? He contracted Lou Gehrig. <laughs> oh, did you know that uh, they renamed it Cal Ripken disease now because of the record? Oh, fuck, man. They all can't work, but because you got to keep swinging. Well, once That's, Cal Ripken got the yeah. record, they renamed Lou Gehrig's disease Cal Ripken's disease. So it's kind of Mark keeps swinging even when he misses. Emma's in hysterics. Did Cal Ripken get sick? Uh, no, Cal but he did break <laughs> Lou Gehrig's record. Oh, and, no. Uh, the Confucian oh, of Confucius. I see what you're saying. I just got the joke. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. Steve's uh, so telling many, many of them. <laughs> How's Kalamazoo? Yeah. And I'm in a car with uh, Jason. Are you on the show tomorrow? 
I am, yeah. I'm the MC tomorrow. With, uh, you're MCing. I'm, uh, uh, Jason is MCing, and he's driving me from Grand Rapids to Kalamazoo. And I, and the reason I want to call in is just to inspire younger comics out there that you could have this type of lifestyle. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason, you just got a big credit for your resume. You are on the Pep Talks podcast. We reach approximately 5,000 people a week. You can lie about that number. <laughs> no one's going to check you. <laughs> That's right. No one's going to check us. you got to pump that number up, Steve. You said that in a meeting recently, and I cringed. you got to lie a lot in this business, right, Mark? Yeah, what? you say 50 grand, 50 okay, to 60 what? grand. Do you think Steve Levine's going to go fucking Google that? Okay, wait, 50 to 60, you think that's safe, Eddie? 50, <laughs> 50 60 grand. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got to get that yeah, number up. And when he, get and, good news, we got it up. And if he, <laughs> if he, has, uh, if he has minions that are going to like look for him, then we say, oh, we didn't know. You know, you do that kind of thing. Oh, we didn't know. And if worst comes to worst, we hire Johnny Cochran. His I kid, I mean. <laughs> kid, Johnny Cochran's kid. We can also say, listen, this, those people that work for you, they, they don't ever make mistakes. They're not incompetent. And he'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. That's right. That is 50000 <laughs> I'm glad we're wor- um, well, I'm glad we're working well, this out on the air, guys. How are... Uh, how uh, I know, right? How uh, how long you guys been on? About a half hour? Well, no, we're almost Seems done. Seems like forever. Like, like an hour. You're you're calling right at the end. Oh, M- Mark read an ad. Oh, okay. Because you did you? Uh, I'm sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> oh my um, God, so I killed four, with that four, ad. Four. What? Killed? Well, I think I did. <laughs> yeah, he killed that poor engineer. Oh, good, good. All right. Well, I I just wanted to get my uh, stamp. On the podcast a little. Did you take any calls or you didn't have them? No, we didn't have it. No, I don't get your calls, bro. We we got to do the calls next week when you're oh, back. Oh, well, I thought Matt might have. Okay. No. Well, we have some Bes- good calls. Besides, uh, Eddie, we'll next week. Emma made a good point. They're calling saying, hey, Eddie, I don't want to respond to the people who are calling and asking, <laughs> calling specifically to you. That would be too depressing for me. I think most people know you're not here, so there's well, no calls. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, you know, you're mentioned in a bunch of the calls, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well more more the merrier for next time. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, I'm glad you had it. Yeah, I hope it went well. I'm going to monitor the numbers very closely. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, can you leave you us know. with Eddie? Can you leave us with a bit of wisdom from uh, Kalamazoo? Was Eddie, how's the acid reflux? Oh, well, um... <laughs> oh, man, it, last night it was very bad because I had uh, pasta with, like, heavy-duty tomato sauce. And when I get acid reflux like that, I, I just, I, I don't feel like anything is positive. Like, I feel like climate change will come quicker than we expected. I feel, you know, the climate breakdown, I feel like... The the weight of the world is heavier! The weight of the world is heavier, Eddie. The weight of the world is heavier when the acid reflux is kicking in. Well, well, with acid reflux, with acid reflux, it just feels like things are closer to dissolution. You know, (laughs) decay is more prominent. Um, I hope uh... you guys really hit the political landscape because... It's just a nightmare. Brazil, you are so good on Facebook. You waste your talents on Facebook. You know that? Oh, no, well, Eddie. Uh, no, Eddie, Zuckerberg sends me a check He came now on and, he... and read his Facebook post. Yeah, because who knows them oh, from good. the pep talk show? Nobody knows them. I have a very... I'm saying... My I'm, group is private. Bro, nobody's criticizing you. I, I am, I, I only I am 20... honoring your... <laughs> on Facebook, listen, I have 2,800 people. It's a very select, small group. Okay. What 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 time are we at, Emma? Uh, by the way, I like 50, Mark's 000. tone on this podcast. It's very professional, <laughs> yet terse, and I and I think you know we could all learn from that. I told Steve. He said, "I don't know James Adomian." Yeah. I was like, "That's no excuse. We're all in the brotherhood of showbiz. You just call a guy." I called Eddie Murphy this morning for a ride, and you know what? He showed up. I emailed Steve Carell, and he sent me a uh, a Pepsi. That's he sent me a picture bad. of a can of Pepsi. 
You think with the money that he made from the office, well, he's going to return your call? He will sell Boy, Pepsi. That's... I just want to say, I just want to say this: that George Clooney <laughs> and Danny DeVito are such big sellouts for doing those Nespresso ads, and now <laughs> DeVito is doing some other stupid ad. I don't know if you saw it, but he's just a little. Danny a DeVito little... is letting you down. Got... That's what the truth is, because we Look, love uh... him. Andy Garcia is a friend. A I can't weigh man. in on this. Andy Garcia, how did you leave Andy Garcia? Andy out of Garcia that, Eddie? is a friend. I can't weigh in on this, Eddie. Oh. I got to back. I got to recuse myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know that's the problem with being in show business is that you can't really nail these other people unless because they're your friends. But unless you're on the fringes like I am, you can go after everybody. <laughs> and then when you meet them. When you meet them, when I meet them, I just say, I love your work, and I keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good... Uh, just keep moving. Yeah. We'll keep walking on that red carpet. And keep moving. Well, that's 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 um, all right. I, you brought up red carpet, so I will have to say that I was on the red carpet for the Muppets movie with Jason Segel. I had a part in it, and I was cut out, but I I'm took sorry. my wife anyway. I thought his name was Peter. And that's a showbiz story. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Now, come on. Now I don't know. Did you get cut out of that movie? Yes, he really did. Sons of bitches. Yeah. Yeah, but they kept my voice in, so I still get residuals, which are very paltry. Very <laughs> paltry. And I was in a dance number. I was supposed to be one of the cameos, you know, because um, I, I had a little buzz about me then. Um, and... I didn't get it got cut out because the director James Bobbin, who directed me on Fri Flight of the Camp Concords, uh, said ah the timing didn't work out and the choreographer was Mickey Rooney's son. Mickey Rooney's son was the choreographer. It's all stays wow. in the and family. I, I, now Mickey Rooney. I could go on, you know. I like I like talking show business when I'm in a car driving from Grand Rapids to Kalamazoo. You know. How long is that, Eddie? Drive, are you by just way? trying to impress that other comic? <laughs> <laughs> it's for it's 40 minutes and jason has oh. a great prius very quiet very quiet when we were at a light i didn't even know the damn thing was on and i said to jason is this car on and he said it sure as hell is and the conversation went like that for a while hey listen he you didn't drop the uh honda element in there to kind of make him feel bad i hope <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do that. That's that's something I only mention in Hollywood, you know. <laughs> you know what? That's good, Eddie. You don't want to. You don't want to rub that in. Yeah. Listen, uh, who's all right, guys. Okay. Uh, all right, man. Yeah. What else? You got something, Mark? I was just wondering who's watching the dogs, uh, Batista and Esmeralda. Um. You've said the names. My doggies? Yeah, you've said them so many times I forgot. By the way, Jackie Pickles had a terrible accident in the box, <laughs> and I was humiliated. <laughs> Eddie, what Mark's telling you is you should be glad that your your dogs don't have emotional problems like No, I'm do. glad you have a, a significant person to watch your dog, unlike me. And yes. uh, th it, it went badly, yeah, well, and it was an hour change. and a half. You're going through a life change, and you'll be fine, you know. You'll be fine. I have so much faith in, in how you are, you know, going to come out of everything. Oh, I this has turned so into such a disgusting say. warm. No, but listen, Eddie, I left her for an hour and a half. That's just mm -hmm. pure spite. That's not an accident. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's spite. Yeah, that's premeditated. She might, she might be mad at the change of scenery or something. Right. I took her out like you know? three times, and we stayed out a very long time. And I threw the ball, oh, which oh, I think is quid oh. pro quo. I think it was a premeditated yeah, act. Think so. <laughs> it was a premeditated I, I think attack. Throw the ball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. I, I should get off the phone now. But uh, all right. Congrats on hosting, Steve. Thanks, and, Eddie. Uh, I'll talk to you guys. I'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you, Eddie. you, Eddie. See you next week. All right. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was That's Eddie that Pepitone. He's a very, very funny comedian. That's dedication. And, uh, and uh, I guess that's it. Emma, what are we? Are we over an hour now? Okay. So I am just going to say peptalkspodcast.com has launched. It's like a website with more, about, with more info about this podcast. So if you like this, you might like that. 
If we talk about reading a book, a link that to a book will be on the site. When we go on tour, that information will be on the website, peptalkspodcast.com. I think you know how this works. I mean, the internet has basically been around since NASA, but it took about 300 pounds of silly putty president for us to consider making a website. Anyway, subscribe, like, vote on all our places. Podcasts can be viewed, listened to, and consumed. Lastly, if you're Kalamazoo or Detroit, Eddie is all in those places this week. Send him some recommendations for good vegan food. Come see him on stage. You owe it to our country. Very lastly, Sunny is a sweet bulldog who needs some help and is just shy of her $2,000 donation goal. Do something good for once, people. The donation link is on the website and in the description. Again, that's peptalkspodcast.com. Our engineers are Emma Erdbrink and Aaron Brunghart. And our producers, Matt Rossimoto. Leave a message for us, 424-262-0904. Email us at fanmail at peptalkspodcast.com. Visit us again at peptonepodcast.com. I'm Stephen Lolly. This is the great and brilliant Mark Brazil. No. My, uh, and our engineer, Emma. And uh, thank you guys for watching my... Uh, my first hosting job. I See you next week. You were great. Thanks, baby.